Ready? Ready. Hi, this is Andy Summers, and you're watching Johnny Bean TV. Andy Warhol was right. What did he say? He said something along those lines. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which everybody would be famous for 15 minutes. What he should have said is 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so speaking of, of, um, Warhol. of, uh, of, of Warhol, yeah. do you, do, do you, um, I mean, because I see posts like all the time, like, um, I mean, you know, because I follow your, you know, your, your Instagram. Twitter, Instagram, yeah. all that stuff. Do, do you, do you look at any of that? I look at it. I'll go, oh yeah, Instagram. I look at it about once a week. I'm not like, I'm not like that. You know, I, I have somebody who does it. Mm -hmm. I basically, I mean, the way it usually goes is I supply them the stuff and they, they eventually put it up. And that's what we've been doing it for a couple of years now. So, you know, there's quite a log on there, but um. People go, oh, you're always on Instagram. I go, really? Yeah. I mean, I looked last night. And I go, oh, that's some new stuff. Sometimes I think nothing happens for weeks, and then they put up a new picture. I guess, you know, you can be as active or as inactive as you like. I mean, I, as far as I understand that aspect of life now and that game that you're supposed to be doing stuff all the time, you know, it's a weird one because, you know, it's that's the world now and people go on that because they want to be famous. Well, I sort of did that a long time ago. So I think it's just more like um, keeping your face up, having a career, like showing that you're still active or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do think, I mean, I looked at it actually last night. It was the first time for a while and I looked at things. And of course, what you want to look at is what gets people's interest. Why has this one got five and a half thousand viewers and this one's got 500 don't mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out you know what i don't want to get caught up in it i don't mind doing it but it's 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 not making music it's not art it's just it's some other it's just modern life with uh, it's advertising i suppose mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't know i'm not mm -hmm. i don't want to sort of drown in cynicism but um yeah, yeah it's not something of great depth really is it it's yeah it, it's because that's i hate to say it that's the game that i've been in the past several years now doing doing shows doing like i said you know this is a, a pod yeah everywhere every day like, i'm creating some sort of content yeah but you know i mean it's a big thing you know i grew up you know learning to play the guitar learning music spent my life trying to be great on the guitar trying to be great at music not like mm -hmm. trying to be great at advertising myself or putting like these sort of fluffy things together. I'm interested, you know, the shows and that are about somebody generally who's done something interesting and therefore it's worth a few minutes on Instagram or whatever, you know, but um, that's, that's not what drives me on to be on Instagram. What drives me on is making music like it's always been. Mm -hmm. if it Instagram, I'd probably like, uh, you know, I am on it, but I would probably, I wouldn't have got to this point. I would have probably stopped when the police were at their height. I mean, we weren't doing anything like that. I guess by modern standards, it seems very clunky and old fashioned now, but you know, do, do you think that and pictures in the paper and, you know, we had to do all these concerts, you know, uh, anyway. do you think things would have, would have, would have been different back then? Say if you were like, because now you have to advertise yourself. So back then, of course, you had, you know, the magazines, MTV, all this stuff. And I know you were doing your photography then. Yeah. Do you think you would have been putting out, like posting to an Instagram while on tour with the police? Like would it would have been, well, maybe, maybe you kind of did back in 2007, 2008, because well, well, all this was well, around yeah, then. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're a young band now and you're out and it's early in your career and you're hoping to really make the big time one day and sell out, you know, Madison Square Garden was you have to do this stuff all the time. But hopefully you've got, at, underneath that, of course, is you've got to be doing good work musically. Let's, let's just say, being very specific, you've got to be a great band. You've got to have the songs. You've got to have a great guy in the front. And you can do as much rubbish as you want on Instagram. But if, if the, the real stuff's not there, I mean, things like Instagram, Facebook, they're all peripheral to the actual work. Mm -hmm. Products, what you make. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah you got it on Instagram, but it's a crap song. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing with the internet now is everybody has access to like their own recording studio. Yeah, everybody, anybody can make a, a record or whatever, but there there does have to be something. Of course, it does. Something yeah. there. Yeah. Well, most things are derivative now. It's very rare that you'll see any original anymore. I mean, it's, it's even mm -hmm. in, even in hip hop, in modern studio techniques. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, what, the only thing you've got is a fresh face. You know, a beautiful young woman or guy or whatever it might be that gets everybody's attention. But hopefully, they can sing. You know, or something. I mean, there are mm -hmm. there's some great ones around. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So during this, like I'll, I'll be using clips. So I'll, I'll take a, a clip from here, a clip from there, put it on my Instagram, you know, tag yeah. you on that and stuff. That's why I was wondering if, if you look at that stuff, because, because y you posted um, an Instagram yesterday and it said you were like stuck in New York. Oh yeah. I put up. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, was there an airline. I was trying to get somewhere. Yeah. It was a picture of me in an airport with a, airline ticket right yeah. yeah yeah so i so you know i get the notifications and i'm like i'm like i'm yeah. supposed to talk to andy tomorrow is he stuck in new york is he on his way to germany you know so that's the thing about the internet is you can like you can you can say and do whatever you want and people will believe you know yeah you know i'm giving it a little bit of thought not too deep the thought but um you know i'm gonna do a lot of gigs between now and sort of mid-december i mm -hmm. thought about sort of doing a kind of a Instagram journal along the way, you know, maybe every day, post something every day. Because you know, uh. mm -hmm. see, that's that's no. what I that's I mean, that's like I said, that's kind of what I do is I do the music and like you don't even know like what I've what, what I've what I've done over the years. Because the thing is, it's like uh, it's, it's such a weird thing because I, I met you um, really quickly. Let me just let me just I'll show you this. Okay, oh, you, know, yeah. you, you know this album right here. Yeah. I picked up this album. There's a, there's a, a record uh, a record shop in Berkeley, California called Rasputin's Music. Yeah, you know there's there's Amoeba, and then up here we have Amoeba and Rasputin's. So I I picked this up back in 1997, I think it is, mm -hmm. and and I pick it up, and it turns out like a month later you're in town playing three nights at what was called Kimball's East, I think. Yeah, in Emeryville, California, which I'm thinking now would have been the tour for uh, for Last Dance of Mr. X. Ninety seven. Yeah, Be because you had you had just done the oh, yeah. uh, you had just done like the the guitar um, the videotapes mm -hmm. hot licks, I guess. It oh, is. I did do that. Yeah, that's strange experience. So. <laughs> I I have bought I bought it I yeah I, I never wanted to do it I mm -hmm. did, yeah but I was pushed so hard to do that and I didn't want to do it at all mm -hmm. but yeah, the, was the era there was everybody was doing these little instruction tapes you know that was a thing for a while yeah mm -hmm. so that year so you were touring the lineup that you had uh, you went out and you you were doing a tour and that's when I first saw you. Because yeah. I just happened to see in the paper that you were you were you were coming to town. I just bought this, and I'll admit, um, I knew who the police was when I was a kid, 1982, 83. I, I remember the videos on MTV. Yeah. Um, but I I didn't have any any of the albums at the time, so the first album I get is this. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like my introduction to you, What's charming that? charming snakes. I'll challenge that. That's a good one. Charming oh, Snakes yeah. and tracks like Mexico 1920, which I love. Um, Big Thing, yeah. which which you you were playing. Uh, I remember, I remember on the on the Hot Licks video, and then when I saw you, uh, you you play the song Big Thing, and I've always wondered what's the effect that you're using on the guitar. Boy, that's going back a bit. I have no idea. I mean, I don't think anything is much different now than it was then. It was probably chorus and some sort of fuzz box or sustain. It almost sounds like like a trail of like uh, not delays. It's almost like like a synth type of type of sound, like at the tail end of your chords, like during like say the the yeah, chorus. Yeah, I'd have to sit and listen to the track. 
Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no, I mean live, live when you would play it. It's not actually on the track on the album. Oh, live, yeah. 1997 era. And then you were using the effect again in the Police on the reunion. I remember. I remember hearing it. Well, you know, I mean, I have pedal boards and I, I don't really change them all that much. I mean, they're always there's the basic three. You got some sort of reverb, echo, reverb. Uh, you know, some sort of sustaining pedal, fuzz box, chorus. Then I use something that has intervallic things on it, intervals on it, and um, mm-hmm. not a lot else. Right now, I've got a kind of a freeze pedal that I kind of fun to use occasionally. And I also I got a big sky which does this incredible sort of echo cloud that I like to use. I mean, I've got stuff, you know, and I also play right now through an even tied harmonizer, which is, of course, incredible. You know, there's no, no pedal comes anywhere near it. They try to make mm-hmm. it as a pedal, but it's not as good as the rack mount. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So do, do you still use the rack mount? Yeah. The rack mount stuff? Absolutely. I, w- I was actually, I was just watching last night. Um, there's a, the full video of Call the Police, Caracas. It looked like it was just like recently. Yeah, I, it was a I few guess. months ago. There's a video on there. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> on I YouTube. With it all. I mean, there's one. The channel uh, is called Call the Police. So I'm assuming it's like an official channel. Wow. You know? I had no idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, Crackers is <laughs> great, actually. We had a couple of good gigs there. You know, we played Caracas and um, some beach town, but they were both tremendous. You know, really good, good fun. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a few more in Mexico in uh, September. Yeah. So, years. so what? What's the what's the history with 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 the uh, with Call the Police? How how did that start? Well, you know, I've been working in Brazil. You know, since ninety five, I've never missed a year. Well, I did miss a year last year. You know, pandemic. That was the only time I've ever missed. Sometimes I've been three times a year. So I've played everywhere in Brazil and all over South America, and different things. And you know, however many years, about four years ago, um, going down. You know, with, with my usual guy that always brings me, looks after me, produces the at shows, does everything. He's the guy. I've got one guy that does it. And we're like brothers. We're very close now after all these years. And then he was suddenly managing this guy, Rodrigo, you know, and we went over and had dinner and I meet Rodrigo and he's a singer and he's from a famous band. And my friend Luis Palo is now managing him. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, nice to meet you, man. You know, and we got on well and turns out she's a great singer, you know, and we should do something together. So I think we had another, Rodrigo had another drummer that was great. And, um, we started playing a bit together, and I think we did a couple of police songs, some of his stuff. We worked some other stuff out. It was a bit of a hodgepodge. We sort of mm-hmm. did a bit like that, but we got sort of used to playing together, and we got on very well as friends. And then, uh, you know, the producer guy, Luis Palo, is sort of cogitating and says, well, you know, we could sort of go farther with this if you want. And he brought in the drummer from the Paralamas, who are ultra famous in South America. They, one of the most famous, well-known bands, a trio. Um, Baroni, we call him. Juan mm-hmm. Baroni. So he came in, and so then the uh, it slowly evolved in this idea, let's do all police. We do like 15 or 12 hits, you know, very famous songs, because the police were incredibly popular in South America. And so that's what we started to do. And, you know, Rodrigo could absolutely sing all the, stuff and so it became really like that's why it's called call the police which is a pretty stupid name but it doesn't really matter band is great it's a great band i really enjoy playing with them we all get on really well and you know it's it's more fun in a way than the actual police because it's it's sort of loose and i get to really shred in you know in the solo so, you know there's no mm-hmm. like oh, that's a, that's the six your 16 fast back back <laughs> <laughs> it's, all yeah. fun. it's great fun you know everybody's great and we sell out thousands everywhere we play it's it's, it's very very nice i enjoy and it you've been doing that for like five years now or something um yeah it's been a while because 
we, you know, we started playing, we managed to do two or three tours and it was starting to really catch on. And then the pandemic knocked us down. And right. so, so we, a couple of years went by. I think two years we didn't play because, only because of the pandemic. But we did play again this year. You know, we got it back together really fast. We rehearsed in Rio and off we went. And the only weird thing on that tour was we were supposed to end it in Mexico, playing in Mexico City. Mm-hmm. And we went to the airport. We were in um, uh, Panama, country of Panama. It's a great show. Go to the airport in the morning. And no problem for me. Got an American passport straight to Mexico. The other two guys couldn't get in to uh, Mexico because their visas were on, because the Mexico and Panama, oh no, Brazil, were in a sort of a standoff. And um, their visa was no good. And so I ended up, I turned up in Mexico City alone. <laughs> I promoted. It was a woman <laughs> in a state of shock because we've got a beautiful theatre, it's sold out. And we can't play. It's only me. Plus, I also had my whole family coming down from LA to see the show, you know. Uh, so, so anyway, sort it out, and we're going to play, play all those shows in September. Then I'll go back to my solo show. That's what, like two days, and I have to get back from, I don't know, somewhere like, you know, uh, yeah, Mexico, I guess it must be Mexico. Yeah, we were going to go to Colombia as well. No, Mexico to Chicago or something like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hope I hope you can't hear that. For some reason, there's a helicopter flying over it. my house yeah, right now. Coming to get you right now. I think it's the police. <laughs> They're coming to pick you up. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> it's time to tour. <laughs> well, I was. Air, what's the right word? Airlifted once, and I've wrote, written a story out in a Canyon near me in LA, where I fell over and broke uh, sort of bone in my ankle oh and, wow oh yeah no it's a, and actually i was on my way to I, I went out with my kid one afternoon we went to this canyon Temescal canyon and mm-hmm. i anyway i was showing him something i fell down a cliff and i and i actually wow man you know and i had actually slightly fractured a bone in my ankle i could not walk back and you know um i had done something and it, you know eventually my kid ran all the way down these guys leapt into action and within about an hour, I mean, I was sitting under this tree going, oh, can't stand, you know, <laughs> eight guys came up like Marines with all the gear. They're all like running together like it was a military exercise and a helicopter o- above and they um, strapped me like immediately, wired me into this little stretcher. This giant hook comes down from the helicopter, clank onto the thing, connects to the thing. And they swung me out in the air up over the canyon and slowly hauled me up into the helicopter. That was the worst moment of my life. I thought, this is it. Oh, my god! Incredible. Was I, that recently? Like, you know, in this little thing, I'm swinging about a thousand feet above the canyon until it finally winds up and got inside the, 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 the chopper. You know, and then I was flown across West Los Angeles to um, UCLA, where, you know, and then I was on crutches for three months because I... Well, yeah, and I'd had to cancel oh, wow. Brazil three times in a row. But I mean, I was supposed to play in June, and I think eventually by September I could just about hobble again after this whole incident. And I went and played it, you know. And there were many jokes about me as I hobbled around. You know. Was that around the same time? Because I remember uh, there was posts on Instagram. Yeah, called the police, well, and you had like your hand was like broken or something. I did have another, yeah, that was another thing that happened there. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with it all. I don't want any more. <laughs> we were out at the, the drummer's house south of Brazil. It was a really stupid thing where I had written this kind of essay to send to somebody on my laptop, and I ran up these steps, and I was sort of looking at the laptop as I ran, and somebody opened a window, and I ran straight into it, Bam! Went all the way down these steps and fell on my rib. Broke, yeah. Oh my broke, gosh! Broke, yeah. Anyway, so that gig did not happen that night. And two days later, I flew back to LA. I broke the 
two bones, well, not two bones, a snap or crack this bone here. And uh, I had surgery in LA about five days later, the guy, there were four screws in there, but no problem. I got to it quickly. And um, yeah, so I've had two incidents down there. I think there's another one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So wow. live. But so, but you play the guitar every day. Oh yeah, I've got one right here. Every day. Yeah, what's, what's, what's your favorite, what, what's, what's your, what's your favorite guitar? I don't really have a favorite. I mean, you know, I've got millions of guitars. Here's my. Yes. Signature guitar you might have seen. Um, the Fender. I went to the NAMM show the year they uh, debuted that, and I missed it. I didn't yeah. see it. Yeah, they That's did. The, the mo monochrome? Yeah, they call mo it the monochrome, monochrome yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, I have one. I've got six of them. I, 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 there's one just sitting there on the couch. So I, I just have it. You know, it's just an odd thing. Like, have your own signature guitar out sitting there when you just take it out and play it. It's just like part of the furniture. It's just um, I have it. Oh, I play it plus several others. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about. I didn't take it out on the road yet. I'm just like I said, kind of expensive. Um, I'm thinking about maybe trying the next run with 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 that guitar. I'll see. Yeah, maybe. Will the next run include Monterey, California? November? No, that's the one after that. I think after the next one I go to. I start in Minneapolis, and then it's a like Chicago area, some big gigs around there. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Actually, I'm going up early, two days ahead of the show, to do a big book signing thing. There's a bookstore there. Yeah, this one called Electric Fetus. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that, and uh, we'll see. Wow! Yeah, that's that's cool. So, so speaking of the the, the uh, new tour, that's why I was asking because I'm going to see you in Monterey. Um, okay. At the uh, Golden State Theater, November fourth, mm. I think it is. November fourth. Yeah, it's a Saturday, yeah. and um, I'm really looking looking forward to it. It's called the Cracked Lens plus a Missing String. Yeah. What What's the um, like this isn't it's not just like a regular show where you're just like playing so, no, song no, after no, song, no. It's, right? It's a completely it's an audio visual show. I play to solo to a big on a cinema screen. I have several sequences of photography. It's all worked out, you know, very exotic, some of it, some with backing tracks, some solo guitar, depending on what I'm playing through. Uh, it's completely audio visual you know obviously i talk quite a lot and tell stories but um i'm playing to imagery all the time you know either solo with effects with a backing track and then i do a brazilian section then there's a i play the music of a certain band at the end a couple of those are on earlier i think we've got it now actually it took a few shows to you know get the right running order and little moves and things I've added on screen. In fact, today I'm actually going to go to the studio to correct a couple of things in the back of the tracks I play to. Mm -hmm. But some of that you find out live. You, you know, you, you know, it always seems to be the same way. Rehearse and practice in the studio. This is what it's going to be. It's going to be great. Then you go out and do one show in front of an audience. And go, okay, I've got to change everything. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I went, okay. You, you know, you get sort of um, a hyper awareness because you're in front of an audience. And you're yeah. kind of playing and doing your best and sort of making judgment calls at the same time. I right, change that, change that. Don't forget that. That should should have come earlier. And, you know, and eventually it gets tight. Basically, what it, it gets tighter and it gets looser. You get more relaxed into what you're doing and you start to know it. You've got it sort of memorized. And now you've got it. You've got a tight framework, and then you get loose within that. And you know, I, I noticed that on the last show, I was playing really well. I thought, Christ, that's because I know it now. You know, I thought I knew it before we ever came, left LA, but now I know it. It took it took a few shows, it took six shows to really kind of sit sit down. You know, well, it, mm -hmm. it's where it always is. Exactly the same as a band. You know, 
Yeah, and a lot of those those sh either full shows or clips of those, you know, they're on YouTube and you know the internet. You know, people post all that stuff. And and since I'm going to see you, I want to be I want to be uh, surprised. I'm not watching anything beforehand because I, I want to live the experience. Yeah, cause no one's seen this before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um. <laughs> Sorry. No, nah, that's okay. Bloody iPhone comes up on the computer now. That's something they just thought they were doing with favor. I don't like it. I'm like, Whoa. Oh, yeah. see, that's that's the difference. I love it. Because I have all my stuff connected and when this goes oh. off here, it's like you have access to everything everywhere, you know? Yeah. But I know it can be it can be kind of strange. Yeah. <laughs> <That's loud. laughs> it's ringing. I've, God, which, where do I go? Phone? Where's the phone? I don't know. I was on the computer. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah i'll call him back wow yeah yeah so for the new tour i want to be i want to be i mean i want to i want to i want to live it firsthand live well, yeah of course you should so so i'm not watching I'm not any of the clips me, yet you know, come and talk to me you know as we get there that i put your name on the door and you can come backstage you know because i don't know i think there are, no i do know one other young man that's come to see me he's been to our house yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because all these years, that's how you know of me, because I would, every show at the Bay Area or wherever. I remember. I'd, I'd, remember. Come, and, I'd come and see you, and, and um, oh, let me just say, um, I've never told you this, um, but uh, when I started playing the guitar when I was a kid, uh, I wanted to be Eddie Van Halen. Okay. Yeah, I want to be Eddie Van Halen. So. <laughs> and so, so it's like, I wanted to be Ed, Ed, Edward Van Halen. I mean, it's just, you know, all that. And then, like I said, when I picked this, when I bought this cassette, yeah, it totally changed everything for me as a guitar player. Totally. Ch and by the way, it's funny because now I know, I know a guy, I know a guy, I know a guy that worked on this. His name's Jan Lucas. What and is he, he what is he credited with? He's credited for assisting. Uh, for assisting at uh, recorded Beat Street, North Hollywood, assisted by Jan Lucas hmm. and uh, uh, Red I, I, I was doing stuff in other places, yeah. I, I can't remember, because mostly I recorded in my own studio, but sometimes you go yeah. out to somewhere to get something done. You yeah, know, that's true. But now Jan has this has this guitar company called Electrophonic Guitars. These guitars that have these built like a built-in speaker. I've got it. Maybe I met him. I think he came over. If that's his name. Yes. Yes, I've got one. In fact, I was looking at a picture of it last night for some reason. I, oh, because we're doing something now, and I had to look at every picture ever taken of me. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it, yeah, no, it's a really cool instrument. Actually, I thought he did a really mm -hmm. good thing. But uh, yeah, no, he must have come to the studio, and he probably said that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, yeah, that was about three years ago or something. Yeah, I actually, I, I went because uh, I go down for the Nam shows, and and uh, the last Nam show, you know, after they kick you out of your hotel on that Sunday or whatever, I, I messaged Jan, and he's like, "Hey, come by the 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 uh, factory. I'll give you a tour of the guitar factory. He's over there. I, I guess." With it, did it? Was it successful? He's still doing it. He's still doing it. So he's, he made a he's go still, of it. Yeah. They, they're you know, making like, them like every day. Catch on. Yeah. No, I, I thought he did a very good yeah. thing. I mean, it is like what you've always. Why doesn't it just. Yeah. It's like one of those ideas whose time had come. And many people had thought of it, you, you know, probably 50 years ago. And finally, here it is. You know, somebody actually did it. Mm hmm. And a guitar that has a, a built in speaker and that's yeah, built in effects know, and. and and stuff it's and like it's the extension of a dobro into a real electric guitar no i thought it was yeah no, he, did, he did a good job with it i've got it i've got mm -hmm. one yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the video for him actually yeah you did yeah you did you're, you're playing uh, i think i think message in a bottle i think so mm -hmm. so anyway so i buy this tape and then it turns out you're coming to town and i go and i see you three nights in a row and that's when i first started meeting you you would sign a magazine for me and stuff yeah. And then, and then, 
so anyway, I wanted to be Eddie Van Halen. But then when when I when I met you and I would watch you from like, you know, you know, you'd be playing your guitar. Mm. You were playing a three three five at the time and yeah. doing, you know, stuff from Last Dance of Mr. X, you mm. know, your solo stuff. And then you would you would end with like, let's say, Murder by Numbers or or um Yeah. Something like that. And it just it just really changed a lot of stuff for me. It got me away from the Floyd Rose system. It got me away from that, you yeah, know exactly. all that yeah. stuff and it was i just want to say thank you for for your oh. inspiration right i'm glad, glad that is so yeah <laughs> i do think eddie van halen was a great player wonderful oh so musical it, amazing yeah amazing an absolute one-off did you ever interview him I wish I would have. I I did meet him uh, one time. Weird. I never met him. You know, oddly. You know, I. No. Uh, well. Anyway. Yeah. Did you ever see them though? No, I never you saw were... them. But of course, I was aware of his playing. You know, as as they surfaced. You know, early on. You know, mm -hmm. like freak. You know, this playing that he sort of invented. I mean, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, Heavily copied, of course, for it's like the school of Eddie Ann Halen. But no one's done it better than him, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. so, so, you know, because he was a soulful player, bluesy, you know, he, he had his thing. He could, I mean, he could really play as well as in all the tapping stuff, which he was an absolute virtuoso of. Yeah. 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 So, so anyway, so anytime anybody asks me who my favorite guitar players are, I'm like, you know, I grew up wanting to be Eddie Van Halen, but Andy Summers changed my life mm. i hope that's not weird me telling you this but yeah. but uh <laughs> well, keep putting the word out i mean it's good good to, uh, <laughs> good to uh, me. see that's why it's wild it's wild i'm sitting here talking to somebody that that you know musically because see i would meet you like in the late 90s at these shows mm. and then so you don't even know this but um after the last time i met you I ended up uh, I ended up uh, working with this songwriter named Desmond Child, mm -hmm. which I don't know if if you've heard of him. Yeah, it does sort of ring a bell, actually. He wrote all the big hits for like Aerosmith and Bon Jovi. Oh. You oh. give love a bad name. That's those are Desmond Child songs. Wow. So anyway, so so I end up uh, living with the with with the guy working with him. This is back in the uh, 1998. And then because I had seen you, uh, I think it was San Jose, California, one of your, your trio shows, um, mm. I had remembered, because see, when I was living at Desmond's, they, you know, I was in a band and, and I needed gear. They're like, what kind of amp do you need? What do you want? And I, I'd remembered when I saw you live, you had the, the Mesa Boogie stuff. Yeah, I, I did go through a Mesa Boogie phase, yeah. So that's what I had. I had them get me the, the tri-axis mm -hmm. and the uh, whatever it is. It's like a yeah. rack mount box thing and then the, the, the 212 speakers and stuff. Mm. And and uh, I'm thinking about all that right now, you know. I, I, I've been out using Roland's, but I, I don't really like them so much. And um, I've gone back to Fender Twins, which have got a lot more tone, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm even thinking about that. I really want to play through a very small amp, stereo amp. Mm -hmm. We're looking into it, you know. It's I, you know because I worry about my ears, like probably most musicians, and you've got to be careful not to be killing yourself every night. Yeah, I've yeah, I have severe tinnitus uh, from from uh, from jamming accidentally somebody hitting a wah pedal and like. Oh, it's a shit like that. Know. No, I, I, you know, like I mean, it's a very serious problem for musicians. I have it. Today it feels slightly better for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, you know, before I go out again, um, we're looking into. I'm going to go back to in ears, you know, that system. Mm -hmm. uh, really dial it down. Yeah, it, it needs. You really need to. You can only do, do that loud shit for so long, and you're going to pay the price. Parents were right. The ruin of hearing, you know. Yeah, yeah it's a drag. So. And it's a drag that no one ever comes up with has ever come up with a, a cure for it. Like they still haven't figured it out. So like when you're I mean, with the police, 
you're playing Shea Stadium. When you're playing state, when you're playing shows, or like even with the reunion tour, mm. there's a DVD out there of you guys playing like the biggest show I've ever seen, mm. or the US Festival you guys played. Yeah, is it loud on stage? Yeah, it's loud. Um, I can't think what we were doing. Then. I don't think. I think even then, I must have had earplugs in or something. I did, did we use in ears? I think we did use in ears. Even then, I think we. I'm not quite sure how long they've been around, but mm -hmm. I think we did have have them. Yeah. So you get you know with the monitor, got you know the guys controlling it. You know, okay, want a little bit of snare drum, you know, a little bit of kick. Some vocals don't really need the bass, don't need the guitar at all. I can hear it, and you you kind of work out your own mix. So each guy's got his own mix, and then you know you try and bring it all together as a band. It's tricky. This should be easy for me because it's just me. Well, I do play with backing tracks, some of it. But, um, yeah, I mean, literally right now, today, you know, going down and see, you know, we're trying to, we're looking into systems, a way to uh, do it on stage. Yeah, I, I mean, I just did these first shows just wearing earplugs and, um, you know, I mean, it's, I barely got past one on the amps. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still so loud. We we'll have two two Fender Twins to get the stereo. Uh huh. Mm. So you're speaking like on the latest tour, like like now? You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I've been doing. Two Fender Twins. So you know, I'm thinking about the various ways you could do it. You could use a really small amp stereo, but you know, to, you know, with some of the stuff like when you play through a fuzz box or whatever, and it gets louder. I don't know if the little speakers could take it. So you kind of need 12 inch speakers to, to carry it. Yeah, we're in the kind of like, it could be this, could be that, you know, and you've got to find your own comfort zone in terms of the levels. And then, you know, it's got to sound great through the app. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just plug in and play, plays loud as shit. And that's what's happening. You know, I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I think most musicians come to this point when you're in bands, and of course, it's always the drums that kill you. You know, you've got a cymbal going. So, yeah. 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 So, on this latest tour, uh, the Cracked Lens, and uh, plus a missing string, you're, uh, you're, so you're playing, you're playing to tracks. So, you're. Only you're... a couple of things. Yeah. I, you know, a lot of it's solo, and then uh, I, I do a couple. You know, well, I like playing them. I was going to say for the excitement level, but that's not true. I mean, I played Metal Talk. I used the backing track. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing, you know. And I play over the top of it. Mm hmm Yeah, no problem. Yeah. It sounds great out front. So, you know, we've worked oh. all this out carefully, you know. And so I can't well. wait. I, yeah. was actually, I was actually supposed to see you uh, like two years ago. Yeah. in san francisco and the, the show was was canceled i think it was like the same show yeah yeah i can't think why that was there was a solid reason we couldn't do it for something happened yeah mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it was the pandemic it might it might have been because that that it was, was. <laughs> everybody canceled you know i mean everybody's just sort of arriving back now about three years later and it hasn't been possible before Really quickly, really quickly, let me just can I can I get your word on this? Oh yes. The walking on the moon Metal. flanger. The, what what's the story behind this? Well, I don't know what they call it. What do they call it? A flanger? I thought it yeah, was a chorus. It says flanger. What's that flanger? Hmm. I would have called it a chorus pedal. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I've got one. Um That's done with electro harmonics who are based out of New York. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Matthews, I think the guy is. Uh, you know, I knew him. I met him in New York to do this little thing, but um, I think it came out good because I worked on it with them. They were just going to make a straight silver top black pedal. You wouldn't know it could have been anybody's, but I got them to call it the Walking on the Moon pedal. Put my name up, blah blah blah. We so we we did a little bit of work on it, and this was there's a nice video that they I finally did for them. But I always like Mike Matthews because he's always sort of push the edge with electronics and you know i've used his stuff over the years mm -hmm. yeah and he's a great guy a really nice man and uh he came we had a nice breakfast in a posh hotel in new york and discussed the battle. 
<coughs> that's the way it was, yeah. So I hope he's done well with it. Don't know. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, very good, man. Well, hey. Yeah. I'll see you in Monterey. It's amazing talking to you. I will see you there. Yeah. And right. and can I get a quick channel ID? All right. Can I get a quick, uh, you know, like something like, Johnny Bean. like, hey, this is Andy Summers. You're watching Johnny Bean. I call it Johnny Bean TV. Okay. So I'm going to look in the mirror. I mean, not the mirror, the uh, camera. Yeah. Here we go. Is it okay if I highlight you? What does that mean? Going... Like this. Oh. Like that. Is that cool? Ready? Ready. Hi, this is Andy Summers, and you're watching Johnny Bean TV. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. I will see you in Monterey. Okay. All right. I'll see you All there. right. All right. Take care, man. Good to talk. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.